Hello, students and family members. It's Mr. Panza helping you out with tonight's Math PSSA Review Homework. We're talking about rocking the PSSA, doing our best on it. And then we're also trying to give you a PSSA crash course. So we're going to be giving these questions to the students throughout the next couple of weeks to get ready for the state test. Let's take a look at five questions that you have tonight for homework. We've been telling the students that word problems need to set up a KWS chart. What do you know about the problem? What is the question or what you want to know? And how do you solve it? Some you need to use that, others you don't. For number one, we see that Mr. Kaufman saw this ad and used for a used car in a newspaper. And we know that 126,500 miles is rounded to the nearest hundred. It's the car for sale. Our main question though, our W, is what is the greatest number of miles that the car could have been driven? So what I would do when I have multiple choice questions that look like this, and I want to know what the greatest number of miles is when I'm rounding, is I'd round every single one to the nearest hundred. Our rounding rocks tells us to underline the number that we're rounding it to, circle the number to the right, and then if it's five above, which this is, I give the underlined number a shove, so that four jumps up plus one, and then anything circled into the right becomes a zero and you'll be all right. So A is 126,500. Then do the same exact steps for B. Underline, circle, five above, give the underline number a shove, and then anything circled to the right becomes a zero, you'll be all right. This one can also be rounded to 126,500. C, underline in the hundred, circle the number to the right, Four below, I leave the underlying number go. So the five stays the same or plus zero. So once again, this would be 126,500. You're catching a pattern here. Now the last one actually changes a little bit because when I underline this five and circle the five to the right, that shows me that five above, I give this underlying number a shove to a six. Everything circled into the right becomes a zero. You'll be all right, which means D is 126,600 rounded to the nearest hundred. That also tells me that D cannot possibly be the answer because in the ad, we're looking for a number that got rounded to 126,500, which is either A, B, or C. This is when it's important to go back to the W in your question. The W wants to know what's the greatest number of miles that the car could have been driven. So compare these three numbers because all of them get rounded to 126,500. In other words, which of these is the greatest? So I start all the way in my closest comparable place value, the one in the hundred thousands. They all have a one. They all have a two in the ten thousands. They all have a six in the thousands. But when I get to the hundreds place value, I see that only letter C has a five in the hundreds, whereas B has a four and so does A. And when I compare place values, I have to see which is the largest from the largest place value all the way to the smallest. And in this case, the first comparable and largest place value shows me that C is my answer. Recognize that this and many other PSSA questions are multiple step. However, on two, I do not need a KWS chart. That's because I'm just simply adding 800s plus 300s. Now, one strategy we certainly showed the children is changing three tenths to a hundredth. How do I do that? Change the bottom using multiplier divide. The same to the top must be applied. How do I create a common denominator? They must have 100 in common. So 10 times 10 gets me 100. And then I have to do the same to the top, which means 3 times 10, which will get me 30. And typically, we're just jumping up that one place value. And all you really had to do was add a 0 to the 100 and a 0 to the 3. And then you can add 8 hundredths plus 30 hundredths. Now, if you want a shortcut and you had a school calculator, you could simply plug it in like this. My numerator is 8 over 100 as a denominator plus my numerator 3 over 10 as a denominator. And when I add those two together, you can see that I get a final answer of 38 over 100. Now, I could come up with an equivalent fraction, but because my choices already give me an answer C, I can select C as my final answer. Using the calculator, I checked to see if my answer was correct, and it was, because when I add 30 plus 8, I get 38. 
and I never add the denominators together. I just push them over into my answer. Question 3. Omar has 25 books, and Anne has three times as many as Omar. And Anne stores her books in boxes that hold six books each. She fills as many boxes as she can and puts the remaining books on a shelf. How many books does Nan put on the shelf? So we're looking for the remainder to 75 divided by 6. Here's how I came up with that. My K, or what I know, is all outlined here in this chart. My W is how many books were left over, and solving eventually gets me to 75 divided by 6. We know that Omar has 25 books, and Nan has three times as money. So if this is 25, so is that and that, which means 25 times 3 gets me 75. We also know that six books is what you're putting on each shelf. So if I take the 75 that Ann had and divide it by 6, I'll be able to see the remainder. With your calculator here at school, you'll be able to use this button right here to find the remainder, the integer divide, I-N-T divide. So I take 75 and I use the I-N-T divide by the six number of books I can put on each shelf, and I get 12 with a remainder of 3. Again, this is where the W comes into play because I'm looking for what books were left, which in this case is my remainder. A remainder of 3 gets me my answer. In this case, B. Flip it over. Let's take a look at 4 and 5. Question 4 is another example of needing a KWS chart because it's a word problem. And this one's a little bit more difficult. What I would suggest here is actually solving the problem and then going back and testing each of the choices to see which works. So on a vacation, Lou took a variable P photographs. So they're replacing the number with the letter P that's a variable. He used four times as many memory cards as Kathy. Kathy used two memory cards and each card contained 240 photographs. Which equation shows how many photographs, which again is represented by the letter P for that variable, Lou took while on vacation? So I'm going to make a bar model. One bar is going to be equal to 240 photos. Then they give us four different choices. So I need to actually solve to see how many photos Lou took. Here's how I can do it. I know that Kathy took two of these cards, and in each one of the cards is 240. But I'm not worried about Kathy. I'm worried about Lou. And Lou had four times as many. So if two of these, which again would be this bar and this bar combined, is equal to 1 for Lou, you have to multiply that by 4. So he had four times as many. Here's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then you can either multiply 240 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or add 248 times to get the answer for how many photos Lou took, which is 1,920. Then what I would do is I would plug it into every single one and see which of these got me 1,920. Let's take a look. So let's try A first. And keep in mind that anytime I see the variable P, I'm going to replace it with 1,920. So A is telling me 4 plus 1,920 equals 2 times 240. So 4 plus 1,920 needs to equal 1,924. 240 times 2 does not equal that number, so it cannot be A. B tells me 4 plus 2 times 240 needs to equal P. Well, we know that P equals 1,920, and when I plugged B into this equation, I get 484, which is not the answer. So we move down to C. 4 times 1,920 equals 7,680. So now I have to check 240 times 2, and does that equal 7,680? 240 times 2? No. In fact, I think I plugged that in wrong. But even so, 240 times 2 does not get me that number. So that leaves me with D. Let's plug it in and see. 4 times 2 times 240 equals, look at that, I get the correct answer, 1,920. Which means when I plugged in my bar model answer of the fact that he took 1,920 photos, the only one that actually came up with P equals that number is D. So that means D 
is the answer to question four. But once again, this is a question where you need to come up with a KWS. The K is a bar model showing what I know. I know how much Lou had. I know how much Kathy had. The W is what we want to know. This number sentence, which of these was the one that gave me the answer of 1920? And it wound up being D. Number five is another one where if you set up a KWS, you could be helpful. Or if you know how to just set up the equation like I have here and then plug it into a calculator, you're going to find the correct answer. So I'm looking to add the mixed number one and three fourths for the miles that she rode on her bike from the school to the park to two and three fourths for the miles she rode from the park to her home. So again, I can grab a calculator and see. To create the mixed number one and three fourths in this calculator, I need to know how to use the calculator. The unit is going to give me the circled number, my whole number right here. So I press unit first and mark it as one. Then I get my numerator. Oh, I'm sorry, let me go ahead and correct that. Correct that. I needed to first plug the one in, then press unit, which again, that's one, then unit shows me the whole number, then three, is my numerator, four is my denominator, plus two, which is my unit, my numerator is three, and my denominator is four, and just press equals. That gets me four and two fourths. Now once again, I look at the choices, and four and two fourths is D. So I can circle that as my final answer. Using the calculator will certainly help you. Make sure that you are following all of the steps and you're not just using a calculator, you're also plugging it in correctly. Thanks and I hope this video helps tonight.